Ochaku, Tehu, Kachocho. You come from indigenous parents. You come from an indigenous backstory and background. You have since um, passed through the US military, the Marine Corps. You've served in Afghanistan and Iraq, and you've returned to nature, to the front, a different front line this time, the front line of the climate emergency. So being here on the front lines, I believe that we are in the middle of the mess. You know, a lot of, a lot of times when it's presented, people speak in a sense like it's coming. Mm. And uh, we know different. It's, it's here, we're in the middle of the mess, and a lot of what we do is about um, action, resilience, and continuity beyond the mess and beyond the Great Reset. So we are in the middle of this right now, deeply in the middle of it. Our organization, the people involved, we're a bit, we have a, a, a perfect balance between science and indigenous wisdom. And uh, my background, I hail from two great indigenous cultures, one from the East, one from the West. Uh, I operate in uh, South Asia as well as uh, Central America. Uh, the majority of our uh, operations are surrounding uh, collecting data sets, running ranger units, uh, decentralized sustainable development models. We are pioneers in that aspect because um, this is something that hasn't been done before. So you mentioned your organization. I'd like you to tell us a little bit about what your organization is and, and what the mission is and what the work is. Most of us are indigenous people, but we are scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, we are, there's so many degrees associated with us. Uh, we are rangers. So the balance is, is, is great with us and we are able to see um, how to uh, utilize these technologies in a balanced way where a lot of groups aren't. Ooh, like, I understand. So, so your indigenous peoples harnessing innovations and technologies out in the field to apply mm -hmm. it in situ um, in real life situations and circumstances. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. What are you referring to? Well, uh, the organization that I'm representing, I, I represent a, a, a group of uh, organizations that kind of come under one, one banner. That banner is the GeoCompass Center. Okay. Um, GeoCompass Center uh, was established uh, in the United States as a 501c3, but we also have corresponding organizations that operate here in Belize, Central America, and uh, Thailand, and Indonesia in the rainforest. We actually have rainforest research centers where we run uh, ranger units, the Gecko Ranger Command. Uh, and those ranger units are responsible for uh, geospatial data analysis, collecting data sets on the, the biodiversity, on uh, the biocultural heritages that exist in the areas where we work and operate. So, so um, I, I, will, I guess applying that to the circulus uh, modem or making it relevant to circularists, I'll give you an example. When we landed on the ground here to build our research center, right? We, we did not want to disturb nature. We did not want to set up a, a, a large carbon footprint that wasn't integrated into the nature. First things we did was we said, hey, uh, one of the things we have to master in, in, in putting our boots on the ground here is waste. Right. We have, to, we have to make sure that our waste becomes wealth. All our research centers run off of uh, biogas. And what is you know, biogas? All our waste. What is so biogas? biogas is um, methane. We cook. We run generators, everything from that waste so we're able to in, in our culture we call it naka or the dragon biting its tail so uh, we were to 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 create a circular circular uh, i like the mindfulness with which you went into that space you went in mindful to go circular and to do something that would conserve the area 
Um, and this waste becomes wealth. I just love that phrase uh, because that's that's at the heart of, of circul circularity and the circular economy that everyone's talking about and dreaming about, but as yet haven't built. You understand? So that's what Satoshi Nakamoto did for us. We give thanks to Satoshi Nakamoto for doing that. And and now, are you saying that you can see uh, blockchain is facilitating our efforts? The linear system is dying because it does not last. It is not ecocentric. You know, human centrism is our folly. We're not in the delusion that death is going to happen. It's happening now, and everything and all and everything that we are doing has to be to have meaning now to another another question so what is what's a typical day in your life what does it look like out there in belize an, in nature an average an average day yeah um, well getting up at um 3 a.m and doing an a.m meditation and watching the sunrise and uh just uh kind of going through a, a, a basic synopsis of the things that need to be done for the day, you know. Are you the eyes and ears? Are you monitoring changes in biodiversity and the vegetation? And Yeah, we are more than likely the eyes and ears, a, a big part of the eyes and ears and, and, the, and the source of the information that most people are reading, uh, you know, from the news and different reports when they give examples of deforestation and yeah. uh, degree changes and things like that. It's the rangers, oh, you know, the okay. rain, we facilitate uh, space and, and security for a lot of the researchers that come from uh, the various universities from around the world, right. you know, to do their projects. So, uh, yep, mm. you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right here in this, right here where I am, 500 feet from me, as soon as we get off, I'm going to run down and jump in a waterfall. Oh, don't say that. Because it's hot. <laughs> Life's you know, hard it's, enough. <laughs> it's 100. It's 100. Dr. Shaq, I am um, in an earlier um, episode or an introductory episode of The Circularist. I asked the question, who does that? Meaning, who wakes up and decides they're going to turn the rest of their life over <clears throat> to or being a steward of of the environment and being part of this effort to limit runaway global warming. Who does that? You've kind so, of answered this because it's in your DNA, but I'm gonna ask you, what is, what was your reason? When was your moment and, and why? This is, this is that opportunity to big up the indigenous people indeed. around the planet. Right? Yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> Free energy should have been here a hundred years ago. Nikola Tesla walked the earth a hundred years ago. That man. And, and, oh. and, and we don't, we don't, we are all scrambling because of greed. One, right. a group, a cohort of individuals greed, not because of what uh, nature, because nature provided it. You understand? I do. I was watching a video just last night about Nikola Tesla um, and his theories and, and the way he looked back to the pyramids of, of Egypt. We mm -hmm. think they're tombs. There are some other ideas about them being energy generators using solar energy and all sorts of things. This is a I'm, fascinating conversation. Uh, uh, um, uh, I'm very pleased to be talking with you today. Right. We could have had the answer. We could have gone in another. We could have taken another fork in the road. Like well, you we said. did. We we did have the answer because if yeah, you... we look forward to hearing more from you. All right. Salute. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much.